Alright. My name is John Templeton, and I'm here to talk to you about video game violence. In the past 40 years, the video game industry has climbed to new heights. Beginning all the way back in 1972, we saw the industry get ushered in by the very iconic arcade platforms that we're all familiar with seeing. Um, huge, bulky, coin-operated, um, very addicting games you're trying to get the high score, uh, etc. They've been found in lots all around the world, and they were actually really, really popular uh, from the 70s all the way until the early 90s. In the early 90s, we saw uh, video games make the transition from 2D to 3D, and from these uh, arcade lots into our living rooms and the home consoles. Uh, since then, uh, since we've seen new technology, with new technology always comes new controversy. Uh, the whole industry is now catching on fire. In fact, uh, last year, for example, the industry brought in $21 billion worldwide, according to Forbes. Um, in fact, uh, interestingly enough, 60 M17 rated games as well uh, for violence, um, graphic violence, nudity, etc. So, uh, the violent video game controversy actually started in 1976, a long time ago. Uh, it's no new argument. Uh, over an arcade game titled Death Race. Let's see. Uh, it was a coin-operated minigame uh, where players would drive the length of a track, a racetrack, trying to run over as many little gremlins as they could. Um, the gremlins, actually, due to the uh, uh, limited factor of uh, technology back then, looked suspiciously like stick figure humans. So suspiciously, actually, to where uh, people thought that the game was meant to inspire people to go run over humans. Um, this was uh, uh, very detrimental to the game, as it actually attracted, uh, it attracted lots of criticism from the National CBS News, it even got its own 60 Minutes special. Um, it was really crushing for the game, actually. In fact, uh, the flagship company, Exidy, which is, uh, of course, no longer around, uh, tried to issue a statement saying that it had nothing to do with actual violence and that it wasn't meant to inspire anything in real life, but uh, the game was canceled. Only 51 of them were sent out, uh, and they were quickly removed. And good luck getting your hands on one now. There are actually thousands of dollars. Uh, anyway, as it stands, around 11% of the video games created in 2012 were M17, according to the ESRB. That's the, uh, that's the rating board that actually uh, scores from uh, E for everyone all the way up to M17+, where you have to show a driver's license or show some sort of identification showing that you're 17 in order to get them. Um, so, I can only imagine what video games now, with the technology that we have, would look like to somebody who was outraged over Exodus, stick figure gremlins. Um, so where is the argument now? Well, proponents against video game violence would argue, uh, one of the strongest arguments is that violent video games program people uh, to have these uh, violent behavioral scripts. A behavioral script is uh, it's, uh, basically just a sequence of behavior that you've learned to do. Uh, Habits. For example, a behavioral script would be uh, you get in your car and you push down the brake while you start it in order to change the gear. Um, a lot of people would argue that video games install violent behavioral scripts in people, uh, prompting them to respond inappropriately to nonviolent actions, such as being nudged in the hallway. Uh, while at the same time, this argument has actually been brought up uh, when violence became a standard in movies as well. Uh, alarmist theories uh, claiming that that was going to install violent behavioral scripts in people, and we've never seen anything uh, to lead us to believe that was a true argument. Um, let's see. Some argue that violent video games make youth identify with violence easier. Um, prompting them to be more comfortable to it and be desensitized to it. And while that may be true, uh, studies show that that doesn't lead to aggressive behavior. In 2008, uh, the Secret Service study actually showed that 45% of young male gamers play violent video games to release anger uh, in a safe environment, for example, and 62% actually just play it to relax, release stress. Let's see, uh, 
uh, since Columbine, for example, I know this might be a sensitive subject today, uh, actually made me a little bit nervous because I did a lot of research on this yesterday. Um, school shooters, uh, the school shooters involved in Columbine were shown to be uh, uh, big fans of the first person shooter, uh, controversial first person shooter at the time, uh, called Doom. Um, very graphic for its day. Um, once that was known, uh, it, they attracted a lot of attention in the video game industry because of the, the violent nature of Columbine. Uh, people began to wonder where exactly they should point their finger. And one of the fingers was pointed at violent video games. Uh, however, a consensus taken in 2010 actually showed, uh, and this was by the Secret Service as well, uh, that only one-eighth of the school shooters that we have uh, in America to date uh, have ever been found to have an actual vested interest in violent video games. And this is actually uh, less than school shooters are found to read violent books or watch violent movies. Uh, it's highly unlikely that this date or that this debate is going to be solved anytime soon, especially given the fact that we are seeing uh, more graphically intense games than ever before. You'll see things now that you never would have even dreamed to have seen you know, 20 years ago had you been growing up when console video games started. Um, however, uh, it's definitely time to take a stance with our latest ninth generation of uh, video game consoles coming out. Uh, it's going to be a, a heavy theme in the coming years. Uh, so if you're on the fence, it might be pertinent to note that since 1995, um, FBI studies showed that the number of juvenile murder cases has fallen by 71.9%. And the number or the arrest rates of all juvenile crime has actually fallen by 49.1% in America. Uh, and the sales of video games, uh, according to the ESRB, has actually quadrupled since then. So um, strong facts to consider. So thanks so much for your time, and you guys have a wonderful holiday.